Hi Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your December 1st to the 10th, 2019 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. So let's dive right in now, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, and see what this time frame holds for you. So I'm taking your fairy guidance and your witchling cards, and I am putting them over to the side. And I'm taking your bonus tarot deck, and I'm putting this to the side. This will be used at the end to clarify anything or for any questions that come up from spirit at this time to really focus on things and help you move forward. And now we're taking the main tarot deck. All these will be linked in the description box below. And seeing what December 1st to the 10th, 2019 has in store for you, Capricorn. December 1st to the 10th, 2019, 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 Capricorn. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. December 1st to the 10th. Okay, fantastic. That's where the cards fell, so that's where Spirit wants me to stop. At the center of everything, Capricorn, is the Four of Wands. That is absolutely brilliant. You're crowned by the Nine of Wands, okay. Then you have the Seven of Swords reversed, the Two of Pentacles inverted, the King, the Knight of Cups, the Five of Cups, very interesting, all of these are inverted, oh, and then the World, okay. So that one's properly up. King of Swords, Air Sign Energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, the Three of Cups, and the Maiden of Swords. So you have a strong air sign energy presence here. This is a Gemini, Libra, Aquarius presence. But also a knowing your mind. You are fierce when it comes to your mind, when it comes to knowing what you want, the way you want to move forward. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Capricorn. December 1st to the 10th, 2019, Capricorn. December 1st to the 10th, 2019, Capricorn. Fantastic. Okay, so we're going to take the top one here, which is friendship, and this one here, which is prosperity. Okay, so what I'm really feeling from this reading right now, and just right off the bat before we go any further, is that you've been balancing a lot, and it's been becoming harder and harder to listen to your heart, or yeah, it's becoming harder and harder to listen to your heart over your mind. You're becoming very logical about things, Capricorn, which is... Something, of course, that you can do very easily as an earth sign energy represented by the devil card in the major arcana within the tarot. So you get to be, at times, very, very logical about things, very, like, A equals B equals C, and moving forward just like that. This is saying here, kind of step back from that a little bit, because, yes, logic is important, but listening to your heart is also going to be important because you're balancing so very much the weight that you have been carrying, which is what has made you be so kind of stringent on you know what needs to be done the steps that need to be taken are starting to fall away and you're going to start to see that the world really starts to open up to you even though you're thinking my gosh it just can't you know things can't move forward the way that I want them to or you know everything has been so hard and I don't know where I'm going or how I'm getting to where it is that I want to be know that things are going to start to open up but there is this there's a need to listen to your heart that that's all I can say at this very moment so let's see right here. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Capricorn, December 1st to the 10th, 2019. Capricorn, December 1st to the 10th, 2019. Capricorn. Beauty, yeah, it's beauty letting into your life. Spirit just keeps on saying, urgent message, urgent message. So let's just see here. And wisdom, yeah. It's an urgent message for you to have the wisdom and beauty back into your life, especially if this is your holiday season. If it isn't, you know, you want the beauty and wisdom back into your life anyway. But if this is your holiday season, and if this is a time to really be embracing the greater things in life, now it's a time for you to take hold of them. Of them, Because here we have beauty. And this says, when beauty is felt from within, your gorgeousness will glow. And here, there's a changing 
of the heart. There's a changing of what you desire. And that's why you need to connect with your heart again. This is connecting with what you love. This is being inspired again, feeling the beauty, feeling the prosperity, looking outside your window. And instead of seeing, you know, if you're caught in the, in the snowstorms that have been coming through the U.S., you know, it's instead of seeing, oh my gosh, look at how much I have to do or how much shoveling has to be done or how treacherous the roads will be, just look at the falling snow. So here, there is a sense of looking at beauty, of looking at the, the flip side of things because you're going to be very serious during this time. And by taking things so seriously, you will miss the beauty which will leave you without the gorgeousness glowing around you. And that's what you want because that's what you're going to thrive on. The color that shines through here, Capricorn, is red and that's healing and cleansing your root chakra to help put all your other chakras in alignment, to help move you forward to the place that you need to be. If you could even, you know, look online, Google chakras, and if you take a picture and you just sat there for a moment, visualizing your chakras glowing, visualizing, you know, having things in alignment and your chakras growing like a, like a candlelight or like a little lantern that you could hold in your hands, that would be absolutely beneficial for you during this time because we're embracing wisdom. And this says, inner wisdom nurtures the skills necessary to see through all possibilities. You're embracing your inner wisdom to see through the possibilities, to see all the possibilities opening up to you. And this is really, this is why your mind is shining through so brilliantly. You're going to want or think of relying on other people. And I'm not saying this to make you neurotic, but I am saying don't let other people guide you forward because that's where things are getting murkied and mucked up. Because if you listen to your heart and your soul, if you listen to you, you will stay on the proper path to move you forward. If you start listening to other people's ideas, most definitely other people's ways of doing them things, they're not going to be right for you, Capricorn, and that's going to really trip you up. So here, the color that shines through is yellow. That's healing and cleansing your solar plexus chakra, and that's letting you know that you need to listen to your gut, especially during this time, because again, there's going to be a sense of rigidity to here of you know having to do things a certain way and by having to do things a certain way you're going to miss the beauty of it or you're going to miss the real blessing that's coming along so it's thinking outside of the box it's moving yourself forward in blessings and it's really it's really embracing your soul that is what spirit is saying and it's saying that this is an urgent message for you this is definitely needed to be heard because here we have friendship and it says, when individuals with common bonds cross your path, friendship is discovered. And that's most definitely true. But this is also being a friend with yourself. This is seeing the common bonds that you have with you now and with the person that you want to be or with the place that you want to stand. So this is really inviting love into your life, prosperity, joy, and happiness. And this is saying here, you know, you have been kind of toning it down a little bit or not really embracing what you truly love and what you truly want. And that has that has made things shaky for you because it's denying your true self. And it's saying, let yourself shine forth. Let yourself be who it is that you want to be. And then we have prosperity. And this says, the inner power supplied by spiritual prosperity lasts in eternity. And it does. You have an inner power. You have an inner wealth to you that is going to be moving you forward. And it brings you such prosperity because right here is the four of wands. The four of wands is happiness and joy. It's a celebration akin to a wedding. You know, it's really sitting there and, and just having beauty come into your life. This is new job opportunities. This is moving house. This is the joy of family and friends, people who have become like family to you. This is really the beautiful things in life moving you forward. And what you're doing here is you're embracing them. Even if you think, oh my gosh, I'll never get there. Because it's countered here with the Three of Cups. And the way I read the Three of Cups is to remind us, you know, never rely on other people as much as you rely on yourself, which might sound rather cynical, and I do not mean it that way, but maybe a little bit. You know, if you put your faith into somebody else, if you sit there and say, this person will do the right thing, this person will, this person will, or this institution will, you can become highly disappointed. Whenever I see the Three of Cups, it makes me, it has me see somebody who acts like a friend, acts like they're on your side, but really isn't. This is always the way I read the Three of Cups, have since... I started reading when I was very young, and if I read it any other way, it just doesn't ring true at all. It throws everything off, and I don't want to throw everything off for you, just to give you a happily ever after. Because, you know, a prince doesn't find you by slipping on a glass slipper. 
life doesn't end up with the palace and all the greatness that that has to go with it, that, that that goes with that palace. Life is different. Life is more nitty and gritty. So here, be mindful of who you trust. Know that you do not need the world around you or the people around you who only say what you want to hear. This is embracing what you love. This is embracing what you desire. And this is embracing your truth. You are crowned with the Nine of Wands. The Nine of Wands is saying a lot of people are going to have a lot of information for you. And you may already be dealing with this or have been dealing with this for quite some time where everybody's words are coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. And you need to filter them. You need to filter them because you need to listen to your truth. If you're listening to everybody else's truth, you will be knocked off course. You will be knocked off your game, right? This is filtering out and building that war, having that barrier between you and the outside world. You see here how she's fiercely ready and willing to protect herself. I'm not saying that you should think of this as a battle. I'm, well, a little bit. Life is a bit of a battle. But I'm not saying that you should think of, you know, filtering out people's negative words or their truths that aren't your truth as the main battle that you have to fight. What I am saying here is that you have to walk your path. And you cannot do so if everybody else's words are clogging up your own beliefs, your own truth, and your own self. This leads you to the King of Swords. So you may be very well having a bit of an issue with a air sign energy, a Gemini, a Libra, and Aquarius. But what I'm also seeing here is you very much knowing your mind, knowing where you stand, knowing what you want. And here, this truth, this fact that you know your mind, you know what you want, you are that actor upon the stage, because that's how I read kings. I do not read kings as male or female, you know, which you might think is you know, a bit silly, but I read kings as the actors upon the stage. Kings in medieval times had so much more of a voice than queens did. Queens, yes, you could sit there and say, okay, Queen Elizabeth, all right, great. But for every Queen Elizabeth, there were 10,000, you know, kings. I was going to say King James, you know, whatever. There were 10,000 kings. So here, this isn't a fluke, because before Queen Elizabeth, there was supposed to be a Queen Maud, a Queen Margaret or Mildred, I can't remember which one. But the world wasn't ready, England wasn't ready. So they said no. Queen Hatshepsut, in, back in ancient, you know, Egyptian times, Hatshepsut became pharaoh because there was no word for a queen. And then her whole existence was hidden away, right, wiped out. Nobody knew her name. So, no, the queens did not have the same platform, the same stage as the kings did. So when I say you are a king, for me that means you are being seen. People are hearing you. Your voice has power to it. The queens are the directors behind the scenes because there were plenty of kings back in medieval times and throughout history who were absolute bumbling idiots. They couldn't run a country, let alone themselves. So here, the queen took power, but she had to do so behind the scenes. And that's what I'm saying here. Here, you are the actor upon the stage. Here, you are cutting through doubts and fears. You are claiming your power. You are claiming your truth, and you are moving forward. You are knowing what it is that you need to defend because you are hearing your voice, and you are giving credence to it instead of saying other people's words matter more than your own. a water sign energy, a Pisces, a Scorpio, a Cancer. Be wary of them at this time. There's a, saying, there's a sense here of logic over the heart, right? That's what I'm seeing first and foremost. When it comes to things, you're going to approach things very logically over the heart. But I believe the heart is very important, all right? And yes, you need your logic, but you also need your heart to move you forward. We are emotional beings. If you deny the emotion of it, you're going to build up like a pressure cooker and you're going to explode. All right? So you're cutting through doubts and fears. You know where it is that you stand. Your mind is absolutely brilliant during this time. But you have to listen to your heart. You have to. It's going to be absolutely imperative for you as you move forward, as you go after what you want, as you claim where it is that you stand. So here, with the, King of, with the Knight of Cups, there's a sense of wanting to defend what you love, but not being able to do so because you're going to feel as if what you love does not have the same credence, does not have the same power, does not have the same worth as what you think, as what other people think, as what is logically needed in order to move forward. All right? So listening to your heart, yes, things might get very messy. They usually do. But it's going to be very empowering for you. It's going to be very beautiful to, for you to listen to your heart, but also have it correlate with your mind. There's some sort of blockage here that is making it hard to see the loving truth 
of the way that you want to move forward. So I would highly suggest, and Spirit is highly suggesting, you step back. You embrace your heart. You look at what you want. You look at what you desire. And you say emotionally, where do I stand within this truth? Because here, with the Five of Cups, now the Five of Cups inverted, I love it. Because this is change your mind, change your life. And this shows me that you are changing your mind, changing your life. You have a lot that you are trying to balance, but you also have the waters crashing all over over you, which makes me very much think of Moses, you know, being buried by the Red Sea. So here you have these waters crashing up. You have emotion coming over. And that's why, that's why it's saying here, you know, at times, yes, listen to your heart. And that is very important. It's urgent that you listen to your heart, but you can't be overpowered by it. And that's, that's okay. That's the fear that is going on. Because if you listen to your heart completely, it will completely take over. You have to have that balance between your heart and what you desire. Because with the five of cups inverted, this is very much saying that you have changed your mind to change your life. And things, you're finding a balance, but it's hard. And you're going to feel a lot of times that you're on shaky ground. Know that you're putting into the vortex what you don't want. You're putting into the universe what you don't want. And in return, you will get what you do want. You will get a power and a truth to you that is really quite exquisite. But you need to balance the ground that you are standing on. Embrace the truth that you want. This leads you to knowing that you cannot trust other people all the time. You have to put your faith in yourself. In divinity, also most definitely in your angels, in that truth, but in you, because this cuts through doubts and fears. This moves you forward, knows where it is that you stand, because here the world opens up to you. You embrace what you love. You have a celebration of happiness. You don't have to fight to find your balance. You have found it, and you're pretty much on stable ground, and it leads you to knowing, understanding, and revealing your truth. With the world, the world is opening up to you. The world is opening up to you in a miraculous way. Doors that were closed are opening. Things that were denied are coming to you. Does it take hard work? Most definitely. But there's also a sense here of having to work towards this goal. Here with the Seven of Swords, there's sneakiness about the, this. There's a taking all your ideas and moving to a new place. You don't need to. Here it's saying you don't need to do all of that. The world is opening up and there doesn't have to be this big hugaboo about it. It just has to be you following your truth, you listening to your soul, you knowing your mind. Because as you do so, you cut through doubts and fears and you know who to trust and who not to. Because you have your heart and your mind working in tandem with each other to move you forward and to grace you. Now let's see here. How does, how does Capricorn have their heart and mind working in tandem with them to move them forward to whole new opportunities and a whole new world. Show me clearly, show me clearly, show me clearly. Okay, fantastic. I'm just going to lay these out silently. Okay, I get it. I get it now. I get it completely. Okay, so what is here is saying that you have the Wheel of Fortune. Everything is changing. Life is doing a 180. And as it does so, you go through a tower time. It's kind of like Humpty Dumpty. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put it back together again. So here, yes, it can't be put back together the way that it was as you're embracing this change, as you're going through kind of this roller coaster ride. What you have here is you have everything changing because spirit, divinity, is kicking you out of the nest, kicking you out of your comfort zone. And now you are seeing the way that you need to move forward, the way that you have to move forward for yourself. This is great change that is coming in. Your life is doing a 180. As you move forward towards what you love as you see that you cannot trust everybody things start to fall it's not fall apart it's change it's change and it's it's a beautiful it is a beautiful change it might not feel like a beautiful change as you are going through it you have the queen of cups right here a water sign energy a pisces a scorpio a cancer guarding yourself against these words a negative energy can be coming from a water sign energy but this is also saying here that as you listen to your heart as you follow what you love and you want, you do not have to guard yourself as much because 
You have the Queen of Cups right here, which again represents water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. You have the Chariot, which represents a Cancer energy, a time frame of June 21st to July 22nd. As you guard, you cut through doubts and fears. You move forward in a ferocity of spirit. You work out riddles and you see clarity within the stars, within the night sky, within a deeper truth than yourself, a deeper sense of wisdom. Then everything starts to change as you find the rhythm between your heart and your mind as you find the balance between logic and emotion, all right? And that's going to be very difficult. It most definitely is astoundingly difficult. You will start to see things change quickly and you start on a new journey. You know that this new journey is coming and here you're falling into balance with it where before there was a, a bit of discord, not a bit, there was discord between the balance between what it is that you truly want, how it is that you're moving emotion moving forward emotionally and the logic that is coming to you. So you start moving forward. You go after what it is that you desire. You take these first steps and they lead to celebration. And it's what's so interesting is that you have the two of pentacles right here. And on top of it, you have the two of pentacles. So this is things start to become more balanced. You know, you're starting to find your footing and then you have the trinity of balance. The emotions will start coming up and it'll be like, there is a sense here of can I move forward this way? Can I go after what it is that I desire? You know, am I balanced? The sense of the matter is right here is that yes, you have everything changing, but you have a trans transformative new beginning coming at you. And that's the balance that you need right here within the two of pentacles. So it is going to be a bit of a, a, a maneuvering, a bit of a coming to terms with certain things to be able to move you forward towards the passion and the change that you desire towards the place that you need to be. But it is most definitely and absolutely going to be worth it. The eight of swords and the repeat of the number eight is again reiterating the fact that you are going to be taking things rather seriously and you're going to be looking at things and thinking, okay, I have to have a plan with the world opening up to you. You're going to think, oh no, Oh no, I can't do that. Oh no, I can't move forward this way. The fact of the matter is, is that these doubts within your mind, you move to the blessings within the soul. You move to the new beginnings and you see that you don't have to sneak. You don't have to hide. You don't have to, you know, arm yourself against the future that's coming. You have to own it and say, this is me. This is who I am. This is what I want. And this does not mean that within this time period, you know, from the 1st to the 10th, absolutely miraculous things are going to happen. You're going to own a Fortune 500 business and you never have to worry about anything ever again. No, this is saying that you are embracing your truth, your soul, yourself, your power. As you do so, you find yourself moving forward in a ferocity of spirit that says, yes, everything is changing, but I am able, willing, and motivated to embrace these, change, these changes and make them work for me. Your subconscious message is the Eight of Swords in your main reading. So we see that reiterated here. As the world opens up, you're going to think, oh no, I'm still caged. You know, I'm still trapped. It's like opening up a, a birdcage door for a bird that has been raised, raised in captivity. They don't come out. Here, it's going to be like that. It's going to be, oh, I can't come out. I can't embrace this. I can't move forward like this. I can't, I can't. There's an anxiety and an anxiousness to it. And it is healed and helped through working in tandem with somebody. It's healed and helped by seeing the bigger picture within a sacred space. And that sacred space does not have to mean that you have to go someplace quote unquote holy or considered holy by other people. It means that you can turn inward and listen to your angels and your spirit guides as you're crafting the cathedral, the temple, the you know mosque, the place of worship of your life and you are crafting your greatness. You do not need to be afraid anymore, Capricorn, because things are changing in such a profound, beautiful, magnificent, magnanimous way that you are being told to embrace this. Do not logic it out. Do not deny it of you because you are worth this beautiful, profound change. And it is, it is coming to be a part of you. All right, Capricorn. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. And may harmony always be with you. Bye.